Hi everyone, we are live from Paris and uh, we will be live for three days to uh, share with uh, digital painters and how to use Photoshop in this context. And to start the day, we will be live two hours with Kyle Webster. Hey Kyle. Hello, bonjour. Bonjour à tous. Okay, we will do the stream in French, okay? Uh, but we're live from Paris, but Kyle, you're, you're not French. You speak French. But I'm not right. French and I try to speak French. Okay. But you're doing a good job. <laughs> and um, so I am Michael. I'm very happy to uh, welcome you on this uh, stream. We will talk about Photoshop. We will talk about brushes and also about an amazing campaign and contest that we are launching and that will uh, give you the opportunity, the chance to win big prizes. I mean, huge. Huge, huge. So we'll, huge. We will give you all the details. Uh, I see that uh, we have some friends uh, from New Jersey. Thanks for uh, being awake. Also, <laughs> uh, friends from Kiev in Ukraine. Cool. Okay, that's awesome. Let us know in the chat if you uh, know Kyle and if you are using uh, the Kyle brushes, you know, because you, you we will talk about it, but he's uh, also a Photoshop brush maker. And uh, we have asked Kyle to create some very exclusive brushes for us and this is what we're gonna talk about uh, be talking about today um, and uh, with uh, some live digital paintings and then we will welcome more guests after yeah, Kyle some we'll very welcome, cool people yeah, yeah. welcome Suzanne and uh, Sebastian and uh, Therese uh, mm -hmm. the entire schedule is available on adobelive.com make sure to watch Adobe Live uh, on this website okay so um, Maybe, uh, Kai, you want to introduce yourself, explain yeah. what you're doing in life? I'm, uh, well, I'm a, an illustrator and I'm also, I've, I've been making Photoshop brushes now for, oh, let's see, I started in 2000, 2003, okay. uh, but, but then making them uh, public, um, available to the public since uh, 2014, I believe. Hmm. And uh, yeah, and I just had the opportunity to work on what I can safely say is probably the coolest project of my career thus far, which is um, working with the official Monk Museum, and uh, pardon me for not saying the name exactly right, um, Edvard Munch, uh, but uh, this is of course a, a master painter um, known the world over, and um, I had the chance to work with this museum and with Adobe on a project where we uh, took uh, seven... I see there was one behind us. About, oh, oh, where? I don't see it. Oh, oh, oh look at that. That's one of them, yeah. Um, this uh, is really cool. You want to show the website? Yeah, let's yeah, do that. Let's okay, do that. so okay. let me flip over so this way. If you go on adobelive.com, yeah. uh, there is on the right uh, a tab, which is contest. So if you enter the contest tab, you will access this page. There is also at the bottom um, um, a link, which is enter the contest. It will direct Scroll you to down. this page. And it describes the contest. So yeah, so these are the original brushes of Monk, uh, the painter yeah. who uh, painted the, the scream um, at the beginning of the previous century. And uh, you can, so Adobe had access to the brushes and uh, we had uh, amazing people who were able to analyze the brushes and send all the information to Kyle. So you could reproduce the brushes, but yeah. for Photoshop. Yes. <laughs> and these photographs were amazing. They were about six to 8,000 pixels square um, images of just the the bristles of the brushes from every angle you can imagine um, and uh, this was a very exclusive thing to have access to these brushes and so we thought it would be great to as best as possible replicate them digitally and make them available to all of you yep. so they are free yeah, all free yeah. free 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 everybody likes free stuff um, and uh, yes there are seven of them and we're going to play around with them today and I'll show you here, if you click on Download Monk's Brushes, okay. which is uh, one of the links that's right there on that page. Okay, so it opens a new tab, uh, which is a list of credit card assets. Yes. So you have several assets. You have the files uh, to install the brushes. So Kai will show us how to do it. Yes. And also you have video tutorials that you recorded yeah. to explain how to install the brushes. Okay, if you don't remember, and the video tutorials are in French, German, and English. Correct. Um, when you download these brushes, they are a a tool preset file. Mm -hmm. And I will show you uh, how tool presets work. Very simple. Um, they are slightly different than brush presets. Important okay. to know that there's a distinction there. Um, and, and the so extension is? A it's a TPL. TPL. If you see, yeah, a tool preset is saved as a uh, fill-in-the-blank dot TPL file. 
And we have those right here. They're the very first file you can grab. And these are compatible with Photoshop uh, CS5 uh, or a, higher. GTWF in the chat who says that uh, they already tried a brush and they are awesome. So well, then, cool. okay, I think our work is done. We have a great no, no, comment from somebody. They need to work. You know, oh, we'll okay, explain okay, what they have yeah, to do. Because this is, yeah. there's a huge prize to be won here. Yeah. So I'm going to click on that and download them. But, but right before I do that, I'll show you that, yes, there are other assets here. You'll notice one of them directly beneath the Photoshop CC.TPL file is one where it contains four of the brushes from this set that are 100% compatible with Adobe Photoshop Sketch on your iPad, mm. which is really cool. And uh, Michael and I discussed this. Maybe we'll play around with those a little bit um, on day three. Yeah, maybe on, with the iPad. Yeah, on we'll Thursday. See. Because we will be live with Cal uh, today, but also tomorrow and on Thursday, yeah. same time. And maybe on day three, yeah, we will do some uh, uh, painting, but on an iPad Pro with a free application, which is Photoshop Sketch. And uh, since, it, since it's six hours of my face and um, I've got a blank canvas here to work with, maybe I'll paint my head something different every day so it keeps it interesting. <laughs> People don't get tired of me. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and download these, okay? So I'm just going to click on them. And up here at the top right, you have the option to télécharger to en français, download. but that means to download, okay? <laughs> so we can grab those. And uh, we've already gone ahead and we've saved these to our desktop. Uh -huh. um, you save them wherever you like, of course. And let me just jump back here to Photoshop. So there is a question by uh, oh, George please, uh, questions, Carmona. Questions. Yeah, and please don't hesitate to ask questions. Really, it's an opportunity to interact with Kyle. Uh, he's asking, can I use the brushes in uh, Adobe Illustrator Draw? So Draw is another mm. free mobile application to to draw, but using vectors. Mm. Um, but no, like no. The answer is no. No. Uh, not to be mean about it. <laughs> But uh, with vectors, uh, you're dealing with a completely different animal. Yeah. Um, and you will see how these brushes work, and you'll, it will be immediately apparent as to why they would not work hmm. in a vector environment, especially when we start mixing color and doing stuff like that. Uh, so no, I'm sorry, but that, that won't work. Um, and I'm glad you didn't ask me a question about my very troubled past. I thought it was going to be maybe a personal question. So, oh, oh it, it will come. It Michael will come. knows all about this stuff. Hey, Martin, who's in the chat? Martin was one of the guests on Adobe Live, uh, doing some oh. amazing graphic design. Thanks for watching. Oh, maybe I, maybe I watched that one. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I watch maybe. a lot of these streams. <laughs> They're very cool. Um, so let me show you how to load tool presets. If you've never done it before, the biggest problem people sometimes face is is they will go up to a tab uh, whoops they'll go up to a tab here to load brushes okay okay and they will not notice that there is another very tiny drop down arrow oh. right to the left of there okay and when you click on that you can load tool presets that's where you find it okay that's tp tpl files can be loaded through here okay and you do not have to have your brush tool selected to do this it doesn't matter what tool you have selected at the moment you can always come down to this little drop down arrow here. And I'm going to click on this gear shaped icon here. Okay. And you'll see we have the option to load tool presets. So I'm going to click on that. And here, uh, sur le bureau, that's on the desktop. Okay. I'm going to click on Monk Brushes Photoshop CC.TPL. That's the tool preset file. All right. I'm going to open that and there you go. Voila. There they are. Okay, how many? There are seven that are visible. Now, seven. Okay. let's make sure that everybody understands something about tool presets. And that is, at the moment, I see all seven of the brushes. Okay. But if you look closely, you'll notice that the top three of these brushes are mixer brushes. And if you've never used mixer brushes in Photoshop, then you don't know that those are slightly different than regular Photoshop oh. brushes. Okay. Now, if I were to have been using my brushes all along in Photoshop and never played around with my tool presets in the past, it's possible that you might load them and only see three or only see four of them. This is because if you look here at the bottom left corner of your drop down menu, the option to display the current tool only has now been checked. So I advise all of you to make sure that when you use any of my brushes Ooh. or any other tool presets That's and you want to see everything available to you, your erasers, your paint brushes, your um, mixer brushes, and your smudge tools, all the good stuff, okay? Make sure that current tool only is turned off. Okay. Okay. We have some friends who just joined and say, ah. okay, how can I access the brushes? So again, on adobelive.com, uh, there is a contest tab and enter the contest button. Just click on it and you will have a page 
uh, it will describe everything. Okay, what is the history of the project? Yes. Uh, these are the original brushes. Like these are real pictures of the brushes used by Munch yes. to paint uh, the screen. And then we give you access to the brushes. Okay, but that's not it. Actually, there is more. Yes, there is more. There is more. <laughs> um, because so I mean, you will you will read uh, you will read the story, but you will learn that uh, Munch uh, painted four versions of uh, the screen. That so, was news to me. That was yeah, really that cool. was news to me too. So, yeah. And if you visit the museum in uh, Oslo, this is where uh, we discovered the brushes actually, <laughs> and uh, where we can uh, uh, admire uh, the screen. Um, so we want you to paint the fifth version, version number five, like Chanel, of uh, the screen, <laughs> but using Photoshop this time, because we are in 2017. Yes. Uh, so if you scroll down, you will see that you can all enter the contest, and you can become maybe the new monk you know, yeah. of the century. <laughs> and uh, if you win, like if uh, your uh, digital pants uh, wins, you can win 6,000 euros. Adobe Creative Cloud and Adobe Stop Subscriptions. A ticket to Adobe Max, and we pay for everything. Mm -hmm. Adobe Max is the creative conference, the biggest Adobe conference. It's massive. It's in Las Vegas this year, in October. And yeah, <laughs> your painting will be displayed in Oslo at the Munk Museum next to the original Scream painting. This is probably this is this, is, this must be the best <laughs> art competition best. ever, right? This is the best. What could be better than this? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, you you. This is the best. You get max. That's a huge value. Oh. You get to be. You have your question. painting displayed in the actual museum next to the master work. Munch uh, CC. Yes, Diego. And six thousand euro. Six thousand. Six thousand euro. And come on. I mean, and no matter max, what the exchange rate is, that's a lot of money. That's one of the biggest. <laughs> Prize we ever had, I think, for a contest. Actually, yeah. And you st and, and what's cool is that you have time because you yeah. have until July 14th. July 14th, yeah. To uh, to submit your your art, so you can really take the time to master the brushes, uh, get a good idea, a good concept, and work on it. So it's higher. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, we had a very good question in the chat. Yes. Someone was was asking, how can I use the brushes on my iPad? In Photoshop stage. Ah, good so this question. is something we will show on Thursday. Make mm -hmm. sure to be back. Mm -hmm. Short answer is uh, you can uh, sync. I think uh, that's the goal, huh? right? Uh, the brushes with uh, you can save them to your Creative to, Cloud assets. Yeah, as a file. As a mm -hmm. file, and we have that file available in the same page okay. where you can download the other assets. Um, right here. So the original brushes of Edvard Monk on the page where you download all your assets. Mm -hmm. At the top left, you have the brushes from Photoshop. Okay. And just below that, you have the tool preset uh, file that is saved for Sketch. So if you download that and save it to your Creative Cloud assets, or you could actually now, I believe, um, save to Dropbox or elsewhere. Is that correct? Yeah, to load them or... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, we will share it on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, did you record a tutorial about Photoshop Sketch or maybe not? We didn't record a tutorial for that, but it's very easy to demonstrate. Okay. So, yes. yeah. So, and you can actually look back uh, at yeah. the live stream we did in, uh, oh, February, in February. And we showed you how to load those, uh, how to load tool presets in Sketch. So, it's a very good point. Like all the Adobe live streams, is, if this is the first time you join, everything uh, is recorded. You have access to the replays on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. So, on the YouTube Creative Cloud YouTube channel, if you search for Kai Webster Adobe Live, you will find the live stream we did in, in, uh, in February. Yes. And uh, he demonstrates actually how to load brushes. But, or you just come back on Thursday. Yeah. Live do that. demonstration do on that. the iPad. Okay. Um, all right, so um, here we are again in Photoshop. Everyone's got the information now, I hope, about the competition, and they understand, and they're excited. Yeah. And I'm already in the process of creating an alternate identity um, for myself so that I can enter. And, and I'm not going to tell you what the name is. Uh, it's going to be a French name, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to be a different person so that I can enter and try and win as well. <laughs> um, is that allowed? Uh, no, I can't do that. So, Kyle, what would be in French? Kyle? Uh, uh, Claude. Claude. Oui. <laughs> Webster. Web is a toile. Ah, bon. uh, toilier. Claude Toilier. Claude Toilier. Claude Toilier will enter the contest. Okay, so if you see an entry by Claude Toilier, you know it's Kyle. <laughs> yes. Well, now I have to change the name because this is not fair. <laughs> all right. Um, so okay. we've gone ahead and we've loaded the tool presets, and now you can see them. And again, remember, you can see all of them because the current tool only box is not checked. In uh, previous versions of Photoshop, CS5, CS6, you might not see the option for current tool only. Not mm -hmm. to worry. 
You can also make sure that show all tool uh, presets has a check mark by it. That's the other way. Check everything. There you go. Two ways to ensure that all of your tools are going to be visible, okay? <laughs> and I'm, I'm making this very clear because I have to tell you, I get emails on a daily basis from customers who say, look, I bought your brushes and 30 of them are missing. I want my money back. <laughs> I say, no, no, they're there. They're there. You have to make sure that this is the case. So okay. there you go. Okay. Um, so I think it would be nice to talk about what is it that makes uh, brushes like this special? Why are they different from regular brushes? Yeah. You know? Yeah, please. Yeah, so um, one thing is that, uh, well, first of all, I was given such incredible information, um, given these, these high resolution photographs, and then description of how the brushes uh, might have felt when they would be uh, being painted with, um, the stiffness of the bristles and so on. And also then given a, um, a really, really nice uh, photo, a reference photo uh, for the kind of linen, the texture, the surface oh. that uh, Monk would have painted on at the time. And so all of those things have gone into uh, creating um, this set of tools. And I'm going to start with just the uh, Filbert brush, which is not a mixer brush. It's a it's a regular Photoshop brush. Okay. And you'll see that's the fourth one down here. So what's the name? Filbert. Filbert. And the Filbert's just a kind of, that's a, a standard kind of uh, a brush, a brush. you yeah. can buy. Um, uh, so we just shape. have uh, two comments from the sure, chat. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, someone actually just uh, mail, I think, uh, installed the brushes on the iPad and said it's super easy. So excellent, cool. excellent. Uh, Gabby G is asking, uh, is Kyle using a Wacom? So yeah, so maybe we can describe the environment today because it's just for the live stream. Excellent. We have a Wacom uh, Cintiq 22HD. The 22HD, which is my, my favorite model to work on at, at yeah. home as well in my studio. And uh, mm -hmm. with a Photoshop CC on the Mac Pro. That's it. Yeah. Uh, we have some guests actually uh, today, uh, Sebastian and uh, and Therese. They are used to work on a PC, so they will play the game because we don't have time to unplug and plug everything. Uh, but if you're on a PC or on a Mac, you have exactly the same experience. Okay, that's the the beauty of, uh, of Photoshop. Maybe the keyboard shortcuts are different. That's the that's only it. thing. And with the thin Cintiq, you, Cintiq, you exactly have the same experience. I mean, 100%. You can use the Cintiq on the PC. Yeah. yeah. I, I teach at a university as uh, a digital painting classes, and um, our lab was all PCs. Okay. And I work on a Mac. And I was able to teach the class and just change a few of the shortcuts. And really, the only change in the shortcuts is rather than using the command key, on you, use Mac, you use control. Okay. And instead of option, you use alt. Uh, we have some PC users in the chat too. These like are easy, Sean. yeah. Okay, and don't forget that with a Wacom Cintiq like this, you can actually assign hotkeys to the um, the hardware itself. It has buttons on the the piece of hardware that you're using, and you can decide. Okay, if I want uh, one of the buttons to be to resize my brush up or size my brush down, or be the option key if I want to select color, or the shift key, you can assign oh, yeah. hotkeys, and then you don't even worry about the shortcut keys anyway. Yeah, it's true. Right. So it's people work different ways. I've, I've always been a keyboard shortcut person. I just like it that way. Um, all right. So let's talk about, uh, yeah, speaking of the hardware, um, certain models made by Wacom, and that includes the uh, Intuos Pro tablets as well as the Cintiq models, mm -hmm. um, will recognize not just the pressure that you use with your stylus when you're drawing or painting, but they will also recognize the angle and the, the tilt oh. of the stylus. And that is really a big deal for um, getting to have as much variation as possible in the marks that you make with a single tool. And I'll show you what I mean. At the moment, with this filbert brush selected, if I, you'll see the shape on the screen has changed. It's very skinny right now. Yeah, it's okay? super skinny. Yeah. And what that means is, it's as if I was taking my, my brush, and I'm, if you can see my stylus right now, um, I believe that's, is it on the screen there? Everyone can see my, yeah, my yeah, hand? Uh... All right, now I'm gonna hold my stylus roughly at a 90 degree angle to the surface, okay? okay? Now as I as I tilt it away from vertical, you'll notice it gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. Okay, so I'm, I'm holding it almost parallel to the surface, all right? Now that's because it can sense the tilt of the brush. Uh, and as I move my hand around, it rotates the brush as well. See that? Yeah. So it, it can sense all those things. This is great because it means that with one tool, I can hold my brush and draw a line this way, okay, and get a fat stroke. But I can also rotate the brush and move it away from vertical and get a thinner stroke. Oh, okay. Now this is not having anything to do with the pressure just on using. the using. Just rotating and then changing the angle, just like a real paintbrush. So this gives me the option then to, with the pressure, control how much of the texture of the surface is coming through. 
Hmm. All right, and um, what's cool about that is if I use very light pressure and I do a thin line, I can see a lot of the texture of the canvas oh, nice. coming through. All right, but if I do the same thing with more pressure, what happens is more of the paint is, if you were to imagine that I was painting on real linen here, uh, canvas, right? More of the paint is getting pushed into those grooves of the canvas, oh, right? And so the bumpy yeah. bits of the canvas are not the only bits catching yeah, some of the paint. There is more texture. There is yeah. more, um, yeah, just much air. Okay. And so as a result, awesome. it's just this one tool. You can do strokes like this, like this, like that. Wow. This is all just with the same brush, okay? And so you have a lot of control, very bristly kind of stuff, and it's just, it's so fun, all right? So that's the first thing. Now, all of the brushes in this set, um, I believe, are mm -hmm. they react exactly like that to tilt and everything. Now, I understand that for some people who do not have a tablet uh, like an Intuos Pro or a Cintiq, they might not have this option to use tilt. Because there is no tilt. Exactly. So I will say um, the best thing for you to do then is to rely on pressure uh, to control what happens. Where some people train in real time. I see like Grissom Chappie, he's training the brushes right now, he says. So oh, cool. Let us know how you feel. With excellent, the excellent. Um, yeah, and I would say you're just gonna have to rely on the pressure uh, to, to get what you need out of it, and you still are gonna get some good results. Um, what's cool about the iPad, the iPad Pro, with um, Adobe Photoshop uh, Sketch, is you have exactly the same functionality as well because the Apple Pencil was designed to recognize pen tilt and all that. Okay. So, so that's excellent. Yeah. So it works either with sketches? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. But there was a comment by email uh, saying that uh, the mixer brushes yes. don't work in, in Sketch. No, they do not. No. No. Oh, okay. The brush engine in Sketch is different from Photoshop oh, okay. in, in that specific way in that mixer brushes will not work, will not work. yet. Huh? Now, huh? I, I we don't know yet, but I'm... Listen. Adobe's like they do great things. We're going to see because I believe that over time they're going to be able to have that work as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm confident. we're working on something. I'm yes, sure. I'm confident that'll happen. So, yes, Sean, we just answered a question. Yes, the Apple Pencil utilizes tilt. Yes. Yes. Now, there's another thing about these brushes that might be a little difficult to tell right now on your screen, but you may notice that right here, I just painted this little shape here, okay? Right here in the bottom right area, you may notice the color is just ever so slightly different than the top left corner. Maybe not. Maybe if I do this, I'll make one stroke, another stroke, another stroke. Let's see if you can tell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now it's very, very, very subtle. Yeah. Okay? But this is done on purpose as well. And the reason we've done this is I wanted it to be so that um, if you do not have mixer brushes, Okay, we're going to get into why they're cool in a minute. But if you don't have mixer brushes, I still want it to be possible for you to get some variation in the color when you're painting one stroke over another. But I want it to be extremely subtle so you don't lose the basic color that you're working with. So there are just teeny tiny changes in the hue, the saturation, and the value of the color every time you make a new stroke. Wow. All right, but not enough so that it would ruin your color palette or make it so that what you're <laughs> painting doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, so that's also done by design, and that's a special trait that comes with all these brushes as well. Um, so let's quickly just run down these, these basic ones. We have the Filbert. <laughs> Someone who says that uh, he couldn't stop painting the other night once downloaded. They just feel so natural. That's a great compliment, and I, I take that personally, and I thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, this is, right now, I've got selected the medium flat brush. By the way, again, each of these brushes was designed exactly from photography that was sent by the museum, yeah. um, bristle by bristle, and uh, you can see this has a different uh, yeah, quality to feel. it. Yeah. And uh, Jack is asking, is asking us, is Kai going to actually paint something or just talk about brushes? Uh -huh. I think. Why don't we just talk about brushes for six hours? Okay, two hours today. <laughs> next. No, of course I'm going to paint. Of course I'm going to yeah. paint. Uh, it's, it's sorry, be very bear, cool. Bear with me. Yeah, we have a fun. Michael and I have yeah. a very fun idea for what we're going to paint. I just want to run through um, how these are different and how they work. Many people out there don't really understand the difference between a, a standard brush and a custom brush. Um, so you've got that, you've got mm -hmm. the short flat, which is similar but smaller and also has a different feel when you paint with it, the bristles. Oh, yeah. The bristles are um, not as stiff, okay. so to speak. And then short flat sparse is really oh, a yeah. light, faint kind of, it's, it's great for just adding a little bit of texture here and there. It's also good for if you build up one stroke uh, after another, beautiful. you can do a lot of edge control of an area where you're trying yeah, to... Much more control. Yeah, so mm. that's great as well. 
All right, so let's quickly just jump over to mixer brushes. And by the way, a lot of this is covered in the tutorials as well. But many, many people who use Photoshop to paint never use mixer brushes, which makes me want to cry because they are probably the coolest thing that you can right. do with painting. And um, I just want to show you how they work. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down some paint. And you think, well, what's the big deal? It looks exactly like the other brush, OK? And this one, by the way, is the Filbert Dry Mixer. How is this different from the other Filbert brush? I'm going to show you what it does, OK? Now, if I put down a pink color like this, and I say, yeah, I like that. That's fine, all right? But wouldn't it be great if when I paint, you can actually feel as if every paint stroke is pushing and pulling paint with it, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'll do now is I'm going to take this pink color I've got here and I'm going to just change it slightly, okay? I mean, it's there, a little darker, a little more saturation. And using very light pressure, I'm just going to graze over an area like this. So I'm very lightly just painting over it. Okay, now I could do that with a regular brush as well. No big yeah. deal, right? But let me show you what's cool. When I hold down my Option key on a PC, uh, excuse me, on a Mac or Alt key, Alt, right? Okay. This temporarily brings up your color picker. Yes, right? classic yeah. shortcut. This shortcut's been around forever. I'm going to click right here where I've got some of the strokes that overlap each other, okay? Okay. And those of you who use, who use uh, regular brushes and you know that when you sample color, you usually see the color you've sampled, right? Well, over here on the left where my color picker is, you'll notice nothing's changed. Yeah. But look up here at the top left. Oh, okay. okay. That's and what right. you're going to see is a perfect picture of the area that I selected from That's the painting. Here. And now when I paint, guess what it's going to do? It's going to use the selected the area to paint. Oh. So can you see what's happening? I can see the brush, the wow. bristles pulling paint. I, oh, look at that. Beautiful. So now what you get is oh almost God. an impasto effect depending on how much of a color variation you get, right? And how much pressure you use. So this gives you now the option to paint with, essentially with thick paint, right? And this is when so, I... So you can go like extreme and uh, use like oh, yeah. two or three very different colors. Absolutely, simple. sure. You could, you could be going really nuts with it if you want. Um, yeah. I like to be subtle with it because it feels yeah, yeah, yeah. to me like, you know, this <laughs> is what my natural. old mate looks yeah. like, yeah. Like However, real life, but yeah, but you, of course, if you want to go Just nuts. Just to prove the point. You know, let's to... do it. Let's do it. Put some yellow over here. Okay. Okay, and I'll select like fire. this. Look at that. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Crazy, scared. right? All right, so now that's that's why mixer brushes, that's one of the reasons they're pretty amazing. Um, now, you also have a ton of control up here at the top left corner, okay, for how wet the brush is and how much it mixes with other colors. And I just want to show you quickly how that works. So I'm going to grab this uh, orange color. Paint a little mm -hmm. bit. Okay. Alrighty. And um, now I'm going to grab a yellow color. And I'm going to come over here where it says wet. Okay. Right currently it's at 0%, which is what allowed me to do some of these neat <laughs> effects. But I'm going to put that at 2%. Okay. 2%. Yep. Now, when I paint over here, it's nothing okay. happens it's because okay. I haven't blended the paint. Yeah, it's classic. Now I pull it in. See that? Oh. It's mixing it as it oh pulls in. Oh my God. Can you see that? So now you can get those so real nice. oil painting effects, wet media effects. Um, I'm telling you, the sky's the limit. You can do a lot. We'll, we'll, we'll play around with those when we do our real painting. Yeah, right. there's Overton saying, nice. I would love to see how you would paint hair. The good news is that. <laughs> we have some hair in the painting we're going <laughs> to do, right? <laughs> some hair in the concept yeah. that we want to paint. Should, should we then tell, us, tell everybody what our idea is? I, don't wanna, I know people are waiting for us to do some drawing. So. Yeah, you know what we will do first? We sure. just show uh, maybe this page one more time. Ah, yes. Uh, so again, if you just joined, uh, there is a link on adobelive.com and also we'll put it in the chat uh, that explain the history of this project. So we uh, discovered, so that's a campaign called Hidden Treasures of Creativity because we discovered that Edward Munch uh, actually left his original brushes uh, to the Oslo Museum before he died. And uh, we, Adobe had access to these original brushes and to pictures and uh, uh, a lot of great people really analyzed um, yes. the, really the, the cell of the brushes to share them with Cal. Cal, which is uh, the best, he is the best uh, Photoshop brush maker uh, in the world. So that's why Thank you. he worked on it. <laughs> And uh, he created uh, digital brushes for Photoshop based on this. He also recorded tutorials explaining how to install the brushes, how to use them, uh, how to create your first portrait. And uh, 
now it's your turn. So we want you to enter the contest and participate to get a chance to win 6,000 euros, a ticket to Adobe Max in Las Vegas, Creative Cloud and Adobe Stop subscriptions, plus um, the chance to get your painting displayed next to the original screen painting by Errol Monk in Oslo, in the, the Oslo Museum. So Amazing. Huge opportunity. Um, and we have people from Germany, Colombia, Montreal. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, we can't wait to see. Actually, uh, Kylie and I uh, are judging. We are part of yeah. the... Yeah. Uh, jury. We're very fair judges. Yeah, super fair, and we are super excited to see what you will be able to to create. We like and judging, share with judging us. people, don't we? We like yeah, judging oh, people. every day. Oh, we're very judgmental. We judge. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this would be awesome. Also, if you want, uh, by the way, uh, just for the fun, if you want to quickly sketch something with the brushes, just to, you know, like just a sketch and share it with us, you can uh, maybe use Twitter. Yeah, do it and add uh, the hashtag Adobe Live. Okay, one word. Hashtag Adobe Live. If we want to try the brushes, they are on this page, by the way. You can download the brushes for free. Here, download the brushes. Okay, just spend something, have fun, and uh, share it with us. We'll be uh, very happy to feature it uh, uh, during the show. We will not officially judge those either. No, we, no, no. we just want you to play around with the brushes and just see what you fun. make and experiment with them. We should also mention. Not only will the painting that you do if you win be exhibited next to the original screen painting, you get the trip to Oslo paid for yeah. as well. We also make you travel to Oslo. Yeah. So you can admire the original yeah. painting and your painting. That would be an amazing feeling. Next to feeling. each other. An amazing feeling. Oh my god. Yeah. Just taking a picture, you know. With I can't our, imagine. I can't imagine. A selfie with uh, the guy. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, again, why I'm going to create an alter ego. A uh, different identity, and I'm trying to enter this competition. <laughs> not that I think Claude. that I would win. Of course not. I'm not saying that, but why Claude not try? Toye. Why not? All right, so um, Michael and I thought, okay, well, since it's the Edward Monk Scream, the uh, fifth Scream competition, and uh, we're talking about Monk, and I'm here in uh, uh, in Paris. Oh, 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 as we are judging, yeah. very question. important question uh, oui, by oui, Katie. Oui, oui. This is the second time she asks. Oh, 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 dear. She's like, oh my god. Uh, for the contest, does this have to be a recreation, or can we make it our own using our own color palette? Now, I was under the impression that it's it's your interpretation of whatever you want yeah. as long as there's some um, sort of uh, connection do. to the original yeah. painting, yeah. you know? It has to refer to the original painting, so this is someone screaming in a kind of very <laughs> tortured environment. Yeah. It's a bit depressing. <laughs> but uh, not literal, not a literal copy in any way no. or nothing like that. No, it could be, a, yeah. you can go crazy. Actually, we asked uh, four artists in right. Europe to uh, reinterpret uh, the screen, uh, they are not. Uh, they cannot enter the contest, but you can ch check their work on uh, social networks. Uh, I will try to find maybe what they did, and, yeah. and we can feature it later. Yeah, okay, I will try to find. It's okay. worth looking at those because they do help you sort of understand. Yeah. Here's a way to interpret Creative this. Creative directions. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. maybe you can explain what you will be painting, and I will uh, search for this. Right. Painting. So because we're here <laughs> in Paris. Um, one of my favorite cities in the world, and by the way, I haven't been here in 20 years, so I'm, I'm really, really, really excited to be here. Uh, because we're here, though, and there's there's a certain painting everyone probably knows that's here at the Louvre uh, by some Italian guy. What was his name? Yeah, random, um, random guy, Leonardo. Leo something? Leo. Yeah. Leo. DiCaprio or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was good. He was a good Italian artist. Um, and we thought, wouldn't it be fun to do a sort of mashup of the uh, Scream by Edward Monk? and uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. So here we have those two paintings. Um, and so what I thought would be really fun would be to try, now uh, please don't judge me because you know <laughs> I'm doing this live, we're gonna try to make this happen. I thought it'd be fun to do a Mona Lisa painting, um, but I would have her in this sort of pose from the painting by Monk and maybe try and emulate some of the uh, brush strokes and the style that Monk used to uh, make a mashup of these two paintings. And that is our idea. So is it corny? Maybe. Is it fun? Absolutely. We're going to do it. Yeah. Let's do it. That's and um, you can't talk us out of this. So if you, if you make comments and you say don't do it, then um, sorry, we're already committed. Uh, <laughs> Too late. Right. We, we should have been committed uh, a long time ago. Maybe you can just show this one, you know, so they understand. Yeah, that's our, a great, perfect yeah. example. And it's absolutely fantastic, too. I love this. Okay, so that's um, an example. We asked uh, Bastien Grivet, who is a concept artist in, based in France. Uh, he works, I think, for... Um, several uh, video games uh, yeah you know, like uh, yeah he worked on uh, call of duty these kind of games and um we asked him also to to use the brushes and reinterpret uh, the scream and this is what he created just to 
to give you an example, I really like how the bridge is exploding. That's so cool. And there's still, and um, you can still imagine the guy screaming, but it's more like a, not a shadow, but um, almost looks like a wizard in a way. Yeah, so, and parts yeah. of the color palette obviously yeah. reference the original. And the theme is obviously similar. Um, I mean, it's the same idea, right. but look at the interpretation. It's very, yeah. very unique, and it's personal uh, to that artist, which is really, I think, what we're looking for. So, yeah, and, and uh, we have asked four artists in Europe, and most of the time you recognize this character uh, screaming, yeah. a very tortured world with uh, a lot of colors, uh, with uh, like a, f a flaming sky, and some references to the bridge. Yes, they yes. They all have been attracted to the bridge, so maybe if you have to keep some pieces, that would be... The bridge is, well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a big part of the painting, yeah. and um, sorry, I'm making sure my phone's turned off. I didn't do that when we first sat down. It was. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can take some. No, so um, but fine. yeah, that's that. the bridge is a good part of it. I mean, yep. there's also something in the way the sky is painted that, of course, yep. you could reference. Um, so here's our idea. We're going to try and make okay. this happen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Um, what I've got here, uh, and I'm going to copy this all um, together as a one layer. And when I do my sketch here, I gotta change my canvas. By the way, did you know with the crop tool, you can actually make your canvas larger? Yeah. Some people don't know that. Yeah, that's something that we did uh, maybe two years ago. Or... Absolutely cool. Look at this. Okay, <laughs> voila. <laughs> And uh, by the way, I do not like working on a white uh, canvas oh, background. Okay. It, it kind of hurts my eyes after a while. It's just so bright, you know, that contrast. Oh. So what I do is I usually will fill my okay. canvas with something a little darker. Okay. Uh, just, just a personal thing, but you might want to try it. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is copy my reference, paste it here on a new layer. And while I'm doing my sketch... Gonna have this off to the side, and again I'll use the crop tool, and I'm just going to widen my canvas so that I can actually later just crop it again for the final piece of art. Mm. I do this a lot, so this is a way to work um, that might be very familiar to a lot of people, but to me uh, this just feels good because now what I know is this area I'm going to select it. This area roughly is going to be where I'm going to do my art, Makes sense. and then I'll have my right. All right, so let's uh, do that one more time so I don't cut off the um, Mona Lisa there. Put that up here, and we're going to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're all set. Um, another thing I could do just to sort of be absolutely clear with myself about where I'm working is I might just. change the background color here like that and then I say okay here's my work area you know <laughs> hey Will we have Will Patterson in the chat who is a lettering artist he loves Will the Patterson. brushes oh thanks Will hey Will you should try to maybe do some lettering with these brushes cool and share it with us on Twitter adding uh, adding Adobe Live as a hashtag maybe do it with the mixer brushes and do some color yeah. that mixes together with the letters sorry I'm being an art director never mind <laughs> ignore me um, okay so Another cool thing, uh, yeah, you don't want to always have to be changing tools. So once I've got a brush that I want to use, I'm going to use it for the painting. I did this in the t tutorial as well, the video tutorial that's there. Uh, I simply size the brush down and draw with it, okay. like a pencil. Then I don't have to go select a pencil and change tools. Not that there's anything wrong with using a pencil, and I do that a lot for other jobs, but for this uh, demonstration, I just want to show you it's so easy to use the uh, bracket keys on your keyboard. Um, those are the keys that, that look like this. These two, oh, yeah. these brackets. keys, right? Brackets. Mm -hmm. um, the left bracket key will size your brush down. The right bracket key will size it up. Okay. And again, like we said earlier, you could just assign a hotkey to your tablet and do that as well. Um, but for now, let's see. Let me go back to my uh, my regular old filbert brush here from the Monk brushes, and I'm just going to size it down using the left bracket key. Okay. So now it's this big, and I can do a nice rough sketch with that. All right, so um, here we, we have our Mona Lisa. Part of Sonny's working on something. Uh oh, already? Oh, yeah. he, he's he's serious. That's okay, cool. so I'm just gonna block in what I see as the general shape here of the okay, general uh, Mona Lisa. Structure. Yeah, so she she's like she looks like this. Yeah. She's got her hands folded over, which I think I'm gonna have to change, or rather to keep it maybe obvious who we're talking about. 
instead of having this arm here mm -hmm. folded down, I might actually have this one come up to her face. Oh, dude, and that great. will be the dude, the one screaming. Let's see how <laughs> yes. that works, okay? Yeah, it would be good to have a mix. Yeah. yeah, still like one post from the Mona Lisa yeah. and the other one from the screen. And we are, got, let me tell you <laughs> something, folks. We are, we are really doing this on the fly. Um, this is not the kind of thing where I, I sat down and planned it all out very well or anything. We just said, wouldn't that be fun? And so here we are. Okay, so I just want to get what I see to be sort of the general silhouette, so to okay. speak. Um, and we're gonna just pop that up like that. And she's got something here that's just a sort of... What is that? She's sitting in a chair, isn't she? Looks like the arm of a chair. Can I tell you something? I haven't seen the Mona Lisa in person. Maybe you will. And I week. intend to do that. Yeah. I sure do. Yeah, that is going to happen. You need to take a picture for us. We need a picture of I know, of I know. you and the Mona Lisa. I'm going to do that. I'll do a selfie. You won't be able to be next to her. No, <laughs> because no. Because there is high security. Exactly. But She'll be in the background. Yeah, I'm sure you can take a picture. All right, so we've got a... a pinky finger there. So I can tell you, you won't be the only one trying no. to take a selfie with no. me. No. And I don't have a selfie stick either, so <laughs> it's not going to be a good... Maybe you can borrow one. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I should, because otherwise it's not really going to be a very good selfie. Um, Alright, there. I just felt like I had to work on that hand a little bit. Okay, now we're going to look at the screen here and see, okay, we got the hand. That's, and, you know, it's funny because I just took a moment there mm -hmm. to make that hand look kind of good, and then I realized, what's the point? Because if you look at the hands in the screen, they're not the most anatomically correct looking hands <laughs> you've ever seen. And yeah. since we're going to try and emulate that style, I guess it really doesn't matter. So maybe this hand is going to be uh, a little bit more, whoa, oh, sorry, it's going to be a little bit more, um, oh, I see. Oh. The, uh, this Wacom pen has the eraser assigned to pick brushes. Wow. That's maybe interesting. We can change that. I think we can change that, but in the settings. Yep. we'll do that later. All right, so I'm just going to make that kind of a Oh, you can press E. A gloopy looking mm -hmm. hand. Yeah, that'll work. Perfect. Yeah. Ta -da. Ta -da -da -da. So we just get rid of that. All right, another thing you can do, of course, if you want to paint with <laughs> your, the erase with the brush that you're using, and this is, I bring this up every time we do a live stream or any kind of tutorial. Um, you can change your brush mode up here okay. where it says mode to clear. And that allows you to erase with the brush you're currently using. Oh. And I'll tell you something else that's pretty cool. In Sketch now, they have included the option yeah. to erase with your finger yeah. using the active brush. Using the brush, yeah. Exactly. With and this is amazing. Yeah. So yeah. Very, very cool. We should show it on Thursday when we, we will. do the yeah. painting in Photoshop Sketch on we the iPad Pro. Definitely do that. Um, so now, what I want to find out here is what are, what are the things that make the Mona Lisa the Mona Lisa? What are the things that make the screen the screen? Mm -hmm. How can I make them both get into this this work of art? I use that word loosely. Because um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard. you don't want to say I'm an artist. When people say, "What do you do for a living?" Yeah. You know, it's really hard to say out loud and 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 not feel a little embarrassed or a little bit like you're a poser and say, "I'm an artist." <laughs> I always feel like an imposter when I say that because <laughs> when you think of art, you think about you know. I was just in, in Florence for for ten days, yeah, and I just think, well, okay, if that's art, then what is it that I do? Pixels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and but the level yeah. of skill too and the beauty. I, I, I put pixels on there. On the monitor. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I'm man manipulating ones and zeros. All right, so we're gonna have to do some some stylization here and some change some of these forms. So what I'm gonna do is now that I've got this general silhouette going here, um, I'm gonna probably I'm gonna bump it up just a little like that. By the way, when I'm doing this, when I'm moving what's on this layer, mm -hmm. I'm just holding down the command key on the Mac. You could do the same thing with the control key on a PC. Yeah. Allows you to just move whatever's on that that layer. Okay. And uh, there's a bridge here and I like I like that diagonal. That's kind of interesting. Let me just see what yeah. happens if I just do that. Just carry that like this. As a just sort of a design element there. Mm -hmm. With a pers perspective. That might be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's something there. Yeah. We, yeah. we might change our minds, but for now, why not? Oh, you know what's crazy is that they, they almost share the same heels in the background. You know? Yeah, I love there's, that. There's something that they share. Yep, you're right. So we're going to have to make that work. Let's see now. <laughs> kind of, maybe... So the, the Mona Lisa has the hills and then it has the water. It's also, I assume, water there in the, in the monk painting. 
Um, do this here. Pull that around, and we've got some of these organic, loopy, swirling kind of shapes in the sky. Mm -hmm. You know, that all really is very um, strong in the monk painting, right? In the scream. All right, now I haven't even looked at the face yet. Don't worry, it's not important. Details come later, right? You want to get your big shapes feeling good. Okay. You know? Um, always work big to small, that's my advice, and um, I certainly didn't come up with that. Uh, that's been around forever. In fact, what was really neat was in, in Florence, I went to the Uffizi Gallery, and they had some, they had a room where they showed the process that Leonardo da Vinci oh. used uh, for um, one of his paintings. And it was so fun for me to see that he, he, yes, he's a genius, and yes, he's an incredible painter. I loved seeing that he used exactly the same process and technique that we still use today of a very, very rough sketch with no facial features even on the figures, nothing, you know, just figuring out how big is this figure, how big is that figure, where are they placed, and you could see a lot of redrawing going on and decisions being made on the fly and changing his mind a lot, wow. you know, and I think that's it's good for people to know that um, people have been relying on the same techniques for uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of years, and uh, that's why they're proven, they really work. So, yeah, um, don't take it from me, take it from Leonardo da Vinci, and uh, work big to small. <laughs> I think he knew what he was doing. A really depressing thing I learned when I was there too is that uh, Michelangelo made the David before he was 30 years old. Wow, and I just, 20... 26, I think he started the commission. I just thought, man, what? <laughs> You're so late. What, You're so late. what was I doing when I was 26? <laughs> oh, and there's a question by River Doll asking, how did you get into digital art? When I was in college, um, mm -hmm. they had a Wacom tablet in the uh, art studio. Oh. Um, it was, really, it was called it was called the Computer Lab. Uh, I don't know if they even still have those in schools. I assume they must, but everyone's got their own computer these days. It seems like. Um, but at the time, when when it was rare to have your own computer, I'm not saying I'm a dinosaur, but anyway, I was in college in the '90s. It's all I'll say. Um, but yeah, they they had a, a Wacom tablet. It was a small tablet, and this was. Um, uh, they also had Photoshop. Four, and uh, I sat down and I, I started drawing in it and I just instantly fell in love with what it felt like to draw in a digital environment hmm. and to use layers and uh, it was for me it was not Photoshop 4 I mean, it's Photoshop 5 yeah. 1998 what, what yeah was that? it must be 5 5 okay um, anyway I, I instantly fell in love with it and um, I started working digitally for all of my clients simply because um, clients have changes. You need to be able to work on the fly and, and fast and with natural media it's a lot harder to make a, a change to somebody's eye uh, than it is in Photoshop working digitally. So it's that that's the, really the main reason I got interested in it. Alright, so now I'm going to look for some bigger rhythms here. We have this shape here. That's kind of nice. And that's going to carry around here like this. Get this cutting across. I'm just darkening up some of these areas, and this comes down, and then out of that we have this, and then down. See, we're getting, we're getting some nice rhythms going here, I'm trying to find a way to, to make it flow, right? I think, and I think I can just take some liberties here. and. Instead of having that, that straight bar of the chair, just have something that kind of carries us up into this part of the arm, right? And then just flows back down here, and maybe this coming around. And we can let that maybe become that railing of the bridge or something, you know? Okay. I'm just thinking now about composition. I, I want this to I want this to really flow. Nice. And uh I like how the hair, if we want to, we can sort of play up that, if, you, if I zoom in here, I like this, I like what's happening there, right? And so I'm just going to do that, like that. The other thing that does is it, it kills that symmetry, um, where I don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical here, where the on the right side of the head and the left side of the head have exactly the same shape in exactly the same place. Um, there we go. 
And now I feel like the way this rhythm happens here, this line down here at the bottom, it's a little too close to what's happening here in this area, okay? I don't want those to be echoing each other too much, so I noticed that in the screen we have we have this shape coming up from the bridge that goes up this way. Yeah. Right? So maybe I could take this curve here and just oh, I might sorry. pull maybe. some of that, yeah, yeah, and then let it come up and around nice. behind the head. And watch out for tangents. If you don't know what tangents are, it's where one line bumps up right against another line and creates um, a problem when you want to have depth in the image or you want it to have two distinct um, objects that are overlapping one another and they don't appear to be because they're touching. So I'm going to make sure I avoid that kind of stuff too. Okay. People tune into Adobe Live for all kinds of uh, boring uh, art theory tips, don't they? And for compositional tips. Am I, no, am I talking like, too much about that stuff? No, like Marinelle just say that it's nice to see another artist's process. Yeah. So. Oh, okay, good. Right. Actually, no, I don't want to go right above the head like that. Wanna, there we go. Again, watching out for anything that feels too repetitive in a way that isn't interesting. All right, so okay, let me check Twitter yeah. to see if uh, oh, one yeah, of our friends some... shared something sure, already. Sure, sure, sure. Made with the brushes. If you want to share what you are working on with uh, Kai's brushes, that you can download for free. The one he designed uh, based on the Edward Monk's brushes. Uh, just uh, share it on Adobe Live. Uh, sorry, on Twitter and add Adobe Live as a hashtag. This is the only way for me to catch your tweets. So let me check. Starting. Okay, I will give you more minutes because I see some promotional content. Nice. Here we go. <laughs> Okie dokie. That's good, yeah. Don't hesitate to sketch something with the brushes and share uh, what your, your drawings on Twitter. What do you think, Michael? We get, we're getting a good start here. Yeah, so let me see and the world is collapsing behind and there is the bridge so we are good <laughs> we need a bridge yeah I think the bridge is good yeah, the bridge we'll is the good. bridge there we're gonna keep the bridge we're committed to that bridge now also you know I can't see really it's kind of dark over here in this area but yeah I'm gonna assume she's just sitting there in the chair and in our version, maybe she doesn't. She's not sitting because he's not. He's not sitting. Oh right? no! So maybe it's more kind of like we let the body just kind of do this kind of wiggly thing, where it's it's sort of fishy and weird, like <laughs> like the body and the you know. Mm-hmm. I size my brush up. And, by the way, uh, Victor, now. yes. So this video, we are live from Paris, but the replay will be available on the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel. I invite you to subscribe to the YouTube Creative Cloud channel, all of you. Uh, this is the best way to access the replays. When they are available, you receive an email saying, okay, we, we just uploaded the new video. And also uh, when we go live, okay? So you will know like Adobe Creative Cloud is live, click here to join, and then uh, you will uh, uh, join our live streams. Um, Kyle is the first guest of the day, but within uh, one hour and 10 minutes, we will welcome uh, Susan Helmick. She will, she's a digital painter also working in Photoshop and uh, she will work on her middle age characters uh, and uh, facial expressions uh, to express a scream, but different kinds of screams. It would be interesting to, uh, to watch her work. She has a unique workflow. And then we will welcome uh, Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian Hugh, he's a concept artist, also working for uh, video games and uh, video gaming companies such as Electronic Arts, and uh, he's a science fiction uh, concept artist. He will mix Adobe Stop Pictures and uh, digital painting to create a science fiction uh, scene. Um, and uh, again, his creative process is very unique. Uh, he's a photo bashing. Yeah, we photo talked bash, about that a little bit. Bashing. That was very, very interesting yeah. to me as I've never very, tried that. Very, very unique. Yeah. Very cool. So you will see what this is, okay? Um, and uh, and then we will welcome uh, Therese, Therese Larsson, um, also illustrator, digital painter from Sweden, um, who worked for all the big names. She's a very uh, good at uh, character design, you know, so she can draw like a... 
mm -hmm. animals, uh, but very cute versions like Disney in Disney movies. So yeah, yeah I, I really like her drawings. I was looking at those before, and, <laughs> and some fantastic. people in the chat are talking about the heat wave. Oh, in France? Yeah, there's a big one Holy in Paris. Holy cow. Yeah, it's, it's just for the live stream. So that? Yeah. Just for us. Now, the funny thing is, yesterday I tried to make t take a really long walk <laughs> to get somewhere, and Michael and I had just seen each other, and then um, I said, okay, I'll see you later. I'm going to go walking. And I walked for, I don't know, about 35, 40 minutes or something like that, and I was just trying to find shade wherever I could, so any, <laughs> anything. And I was just chasing shadows the whole way, trying to make it. And I finally gave up and decided I'm going to take an, an Uber to get yeah. to uh, to where I'm trying to get to because it was, it was going to be at least another hour of walking, I think. And I was standing there on the side of the road waiting for my Uber, and this guy pulls up on a scooter, beeps a little bit, and says, Bonjour! And uh, I look and I say, Why is this guy talking to me? I don't know anybody <laughs> in France. How is this possible? And then I look closely, and it's Michael, and he's just he's just on his way home on his scooter. It's an amazing coincidence. And... Um, that was crazy. But I didn't recognize him. It was out of context. He had a helmet on and stuff. It was oh, yeah. kind of funny. And uh, two seconds later, right behind him, the Uber guy pulled up, and it was uh, yeah, that, that was, was good. a funny moment. But wow, is it hot? Yeah, not 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 in a pleasant way. It's kind of brutal, actually. But it's okay. You we discovered have... my electric scooter. I know. That's so. Oh yeah, we talked yeah. about this a, in you, France. Holy cow! service in Paris where you can uh, you just use an app to rent an electric scooter. So good. Really, really smart. Um, I, I, I wish I don't know if they have that kind of stuff in the states yet in any cities. I think we we talked about that too. I'm not sure, but listen, oh. if they don't, they need it right now because oh, yeah. oh, so cool. Cars too. Yeah, cars too. Electric cars, electric scooters. Oh, it's there is a heat wave everywhere apparently. Where else? They say in the U.S. too. Where? Oh, triple digits here in Texas. Yeah, you triple see? digits, Texas. Well, but Texas is known for being pretty hot, isn't Portugal, it? Portugal, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised, Ricardo. <laughs> it's not, it's not like a surprising, you know, warm weather or hot weather in Portugal. You're like, yeah, of course. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. In Paris, in June. Whoa. No, it's it's pretty. It's pretty uh, what rough. What is Sebastian' last name? Uh, okay, uh, Evie. If you go on adobelive.com. Uh, on the right, you will find a schedule tab. So click on the schedule tab and you will have all the names of the guests and uh, you can be notified when they go live. You can add them to your calendar. So go on adobelive.com and you will have the list of the guests. And this is Sebastian Hu, H-U-E. Even Scotland has a heat wave right now, you see? Scotland? Even Scotland. Wow. Heat wave in Scotland might be like a 22 degrees. <laughs> Oh, then don't complain about that. I don't want to hear any complaints. <laughs> no. All right. Um, so, I think we're off to a good start here. I, what I've done here, as you can see at the bottom, is I, I changed the body to actually be sort of this ghostly sort of uh, squiggly thing coming up, just like they do in the, like Monk did in the painting here, right? So we've got that kind of change there. I like that. It's sort of interesting. Um, ah, it looks great. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And you know, I spend I spend a good bit of time on on this stage of anything I do, uh, the sketch, the trying to. You don't want to be later on trying to work out where stuff mm. really is, and especially the bigger shapes, like I said earlier. Um, if you get this solid and feeling pretty good uh, as a first step, then the painting part of it, um, or doing the finish, or you know, all the other later stages are much much easier to mm. to manage. Um, it's just, it's so hard if you don't get this right at the beginning. Um, this is what I've learned. And I know lots of folks out there agree with me. Um, you just have to get the sketch to feel right. That's where the work is, you know? And right now, I mean, I know it doesn't look like she has any hair. It looks kind of like a, uh, she's wearing a hood or something. We'll, oh. we'll address that when we paint. Um, we but just a... to... Divanaya saying, oh my god, this is Mona Lisa scream in one word. Yeah, maybe we need to find a, a title for this painting. Oh, yeah. So, yeah they, they will be creative in the chat. We'll call it Heat Wave. <laughs> She's melting. <laughs> yeah, find a good title for this one. Yeah. You need to find the title of the painting and also the name of the painter. It could be uh, oh, what Leonardo I just Moon. Or, yeah. 
<laughs> Just find something. Leonardo Dadvard. No, it's not good. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I think. I don't know. What do you think about this this body here? This weird body. Yeah. Is that weird or is that okay? Is it weird or or is it good to be weird? Yeah. That's also a question, you know. It's a it's a dark shape. I mean, now's the time I could. I guess I got to do is size my brush up a little bit, and start kind of just blocking some stuff in. Mm. Let's see how that works. Let's see. Now we got some some shapes that I can see. Where's the positive? Where's the negative? You know. So let's see. She's got this. This piece of cloth that wraps over, folds over, and then she's got looks like sort of a sleeve. Okay, so they're like screaming Mona, Mon scream, Mona is in the scream. And then that's back here again. We see that same shape, and back here. I think I, I'm just really trying to work out some darks and some lights now. You know. Don't like that. Let's see. Just... And what I'm doing, by the way, is I'm, I'm selecting color mm -hmm. that's already on the canvas. So oh, okay. Some blacks, some grays, whatever. Just to try and work out. Of course, your hair is going to be darker up here. I see it's a little lighter as it carries down her head, right? Mm -hmm. And then lighter again up top, where I guess there might have been a highlight or you know some 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 light catching there. One thing that'll help it not look like it's a hood is just to add the part. So once I do that, it should help. See? No problemo. Magically make hair by just adding a part. There we go. I think that works. This dark shape kind of just bleeds right into this dark shape. I like that. All right. right. Yeah? Yeah. And look, we have some friends using our brushes right now. Oh yeah? Take screen, yeah, look at that. Oh fun. Well thank you for sharing. Please keep please keep doing that. And that's cool. on the iPad, I think. Oh on the iPad, yeah, looks good. It's good, huh? Yeah. With monks brushes and look at Loic. Doing a good job. This is loading. Come on, Twitter. Come, Come on, on, Twitter, don't fail us now. Come on. Whoops. Whoops. Twitter, you're going to make a scream. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, ah, here oh we boy. go. It's a good thing I don't get paid to tell jokes. Look at that. What? Yeah. Is that with the, it must be with the mixer brushes. Holy Christmas, Loic. that's cool. It's good, huh? Wow, Loic. Loic? Yeah, Luik. Wait, did he, he didn't just do that. You didn't just do that right now. I don't know. No. I don't know. Impossible. Let us know, Luik. What's no. going on? I mean, come on. <laughs> he had that one sitting, waiting to post it. I mean, he must have. Or she. Luik. <laughs> is Luik a... I don't know if uh, it's a, ma a it's man's male. name. It's male. Okay. Yeah. Luik. Where are you from, Luik? From Paris. Oh. Ah, bonjour, okay. ça va? Ah, but he's a professional uh, digital painter, you can tell. Well, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> Got our. Okay, so now ah, we're starting. He's in the to chat. Feel... Hey, Loic. Huh? Did you do that today, or is this something you did uh, in the past? Or Let us know, Loic. If you just did that in the last 10 minutes, then I'm going to have yeah. to leave. Then we quit. <laughs> <laughs> just, just uh, that'll be the we end drop of the, the stylus. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> drop the stylus. <laughs> nice. All right, we got some some darks coming up under here, and I think I'm going to. I started when you mentioned the number. The number. Oh, uh, maybe seven. the six thousand euros. What? Yeah. <laughs> how, long, how long? How long have we been live? <gasps> We've only been live for like what half? Uh, half one hour. One hour and he did that? He's fast, huh? Good gracious. Uh. Alrighty, so, well, we're off to a good start here. We're getting some stuff down, you know? He's like, no, please don't leave. Oh, that's nice, like. 
Yeah, because if you join it, maybe you're not aware, but if you paint your own version of the screen using uh, Kai's brushes uh, that he's designed, I mean, the uh, seven brushes inspired by uh, Monk Swan for free. Oh, when I mentioned the hashtag. Okay, so like 45 minutes ago. Good gracious. It started 45 minutes. No. Oh my God, Louis. How many hands so do you have? Fast. Yeah. Do you have six hands? How many people in the studio? Wait, wait. No. So good. So yeah, you can paint your own version and uh, enter the contest. The link is on adobelive.com and get a chance to win 6,000 euros. A ticket to Adobe Max in Las Vegas. Creative Cloud and Adobe Stock subscriptions and get your painting displayed next to the original Scream by Munch in Oslo. And we pay the travel to Oslo. So you uh, can admire... When we say we, it's not Michael and me. Yeah, it's Adobe. It's, yeah, because Michael and yeah. I, we're just not going to do that. We're nice guys. No, we, but we, we can buy what? We can buy, we can buy croissant? Croissant. 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 Sure. croissant macaron. Uh, and the macaron will be back <laughs> on Adobe Live probably tomorrow. Yeah. Stay tuned. If you are not used to the macaron concept, they will be back tomorrow. You have to tell me what that is because I yeah, saw some comments tomorrow. on Twitter that were very confusing to me. You will see tomorrow. This okay. is something that's, that is just happening in Paris. Well, here's Actually, what I want to know. Am I not getting any free macaron for, for being here and drawing? Because I love the macaron. You will get them tomorrow. Thank goodness. <laughs> and one of the best. Pistachio? Just been. You will see. You will see. <laughs> so this is like a tradition that we have uh, when we stream from Paris, ah, but actually ah. during the live stream, in, uh, the last uh, stream in uh, San Francisco, we ordered some macaron oh, made yes. in San Francisco. Nice, nice. Were they any good? Recommended by the guest. Oh, really? Yeah. And they were terrible. Oh. Well, I couldn't say that live because she would have been offended. No, but you know, that's the thing. You have to be but here now to get the real deal. Yeah. Now, compared with the one in Paris, seriously, it's... Uh, well, what, what did you expect? It was, a, it was a scam. It was a scam. What would you expect, you know? I don't know. All right, so... See, what I've been doing here is just kind of getting some values in there for the figure. And now I think about, okay, so what do I do with the background? And I'm only working uh, in grayscale, so to speak, right now. I just want to yeah. get this worked out so it feels good. Um, and, you know, I have to say, everyone's different, but... For me, it really helps to work this way, to, to get your darks and lights and your big shapes and all that stuff, just get it done, get it down, and feel good about it. Because if you do that, and if it works that way, mm -hmm. um, you're setting yourself up for success in the later stages. Uh, if it doesn't work at this stage, and you decide you're just going to barrel forward, go on to color and go on to details and stuff, I guarantee you're going to be in for a rough ride. Um, you really have to make this stuff work. And it, it's worth taking the time to, to sketch, you know? And we, yeah, we're doing this at an accelerated pace because we only have a couple hours today and some time tomorrow. But um, normally, you know, I would, I would take more time on something like this uh, to really be sure it works. But I think we're doing okay. Yeah. I think we're doing all right. And yeah, I've sized the brush up, as you can see. A little bigger now. Ryan is asking, Kyle, do you ever draw things you like to do? Things like, I like instance, to do. You like hmm. to uh, run. You draw some. You know, I uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't. Well, I, the only thing I ever draw that's a, that happens to be a personal uh, hobby of mine, so to speak, is, is tennis. I'll occasionally draw people playing tennis, but that usually only happens when um, there's, a, there's an event going on. Yeah, yeah. like uh, I drew a, yeah, a I sketch the, of you Songa. Open, then you would, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll sketch him Songa. I like Songa. Songa. Yeah. He came. He came to our uh, our town where I live and for a tennis really? tournament. And I watched. Yeah, I got to see him live, and it was very it's cool. Yes. And the other guy who came was Mofis. Oh my god! Who I think is so cool. Oh my god! Yeah, and two very athletic players. Like, uh, yeah, some guy is very powerful. Everything in the, uh, in the huge, power huge. when Mofis can run like for hours. It's crazy. Yeah, he's. I really actually between the two of them, I, I enjoyed watching Mofis more because yeah. he's kind of acrobatic and uh, does a lot of mixing of shots. And anybody who likes tennis knows that it can get a little stale when you're watching tennis and everyone's such a power player that it just becomes a big baseline um, battle, you know? I like when there's some finesse in there and some some shot making. And was it on clay weird. or...? What? It was on hard court. Okay. Um, so yeah, not as much sliding around, which I really like watching Monfils when he plays at the French or any other clay thing because he does a lot of sliding around. Um, 
and I was sad this year not to catch the final um, because I am a Nadal fan. Really love Nadal, and I was so excited to see that he was in the final again. And then I, I just forgot to watch. We were ha- we are having oh. a vacation. Uh, we were doing other things, and I just completely forgot about it. And then found the result later. It was really cool that he won because anybody who does follow tennis knows that he was out of the game for a while. They were kind of hurt, and it was just exciting for him. So. But of course, it'd be nice for a French person to win the French Open. It hasn't happened in a while. When's the last time that happened? Uh, French player? It was yeah. in 1983. Goodness gracious. Yannick Noah. I love Noah. He was amazing. So yeah, a long time ago. Speaking of acrobatic, yeah, he was he was all over the place. And he did yeah. that famous jump uh, smash, the overhead yeah, the jump, jump smash. up. And bam! And also, one of the... First one using the shot between the legs, you know? Oh yeah, he did that! The tweener! Yeah, the, the tweener! tweener. Yeah. yeah! He Little... didn't create it, but uh, he was one of the first uh, showcasing it at, at this level. Yeah. So cool. I saw Agassi pull that off a few times in his heyday. I went as Agassi for a Halloween party um, about 10 years ago. And uh, my wife went as Steffi Graf. Uh, she's German, so <laughs> just that'd be it fun. Works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, no. Not everybody got it, <laughs> obviously, because you know I'm I'm so much better looking than Agassi, so it was hard. People said, "Well, wait a second, what?" No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so obviously, yeah. that was the problem, right? That Michael? was the problem. That was yeah. it. That was why it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was my he was my my hero when I was in high school. Actually, cool guy. Oh, me too. Yeah, yeah, so cool. All right, we're getting this sky to look kind of funky and cool, and maybe there's going to be that water element there. And we don't know what's yeah. happening. We so don't someone know. was saying in the chat like you're, that you're using the same uh, approach that uh, old masters, you know, starting in black and white with a composition and sketch composition and black and white. Yeah, and this, but this is the this is the way. You know, it's kind of like I don't say it's cheating, obviously, but it just works. It's uh, why 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 fix something that isn't broken. Working this way for me gives me a much better chance at making a somewhat successful image at the end, right? It, it's it's easier to not screw it up if I rely on um, these tried and true methods of of painting. You know, if if I didn't do this, I would be doing a lot of guesswork, mm. and for me, that just doesn't work. There are, there are people out there who really have a great instinct. They just sort of know, hey, that's going to work, and I just know it. I feel it. I, I'm not one of those people. Um, I need these, not cheats, but these sort of, uh, these step-by-step uh, tricks. I need these in my process in order for it to work. Hmm. So, you know, we're all, we're all different. I greatly admire people who don't work this way because they don't need to. I'm kind of amazed by their brains. Like some people I, I, who can maybe just sit down and, and understand color like that. They say, uh, I'm just going to start painting. You know, I mean, I, there are very few people like that that I know, but I have seen people work that way. And it's just, you know, different brains. Um, I'm not that I'm not that guy. This is like a security blanket for me. Get my sketch down understand my darks and my lights it doesn't mean that you don't make changes later um it doesn't mean that you're locked in and you have to be totally committed to what you do at this stage it just means that you're giving yourself a nice foundation you know Mm. i need that all right so let's see that's a nice dark shape there and it just pops right out we're going to make that darker on the Edge just to really contain her, right? That feels better. And probably I don't want too much attention on the hand. I mean, it's it's fine, but I'm just gonna make that a little darker. Okay. So it's just not gonna be. Yeah, not too. Yeah, I get you. Not the yeah. focal point there. Yeah. Too much contrast. Another good thing you should do is the same as when you work traditionally, you know how you step away from your canvas? Yeah. So I zoom out and it has the same uh, the same effect. If I look at it like <laughs> this, you know, 
like a postage Makes stamp, sense. then you can really see, hey, how's this coming together? You know? Hmm. And I look at it, I say, you know what's pretty good, and I can tell right away there's too much contrast down here where the at the bottom right corner where the bridge is. Right? I don't want that to be so black and white down there, so I'll just use some grays like that, right? Maybe just gloss over some of this up here too. But I don't want that to be super, super heavy contrast. The question for you by Iria Arum asking Kain, have you ever found a difficulty on what you want to draw and how do you deal with an artist block? Hmm. Well, you know, being a commercial artist, that really isn't very much a problem because I have people telling me what to draw hmm. all the time. It's, it's, I'll, I'll get a call and they'll say, we need uh, you to draw a horse smoking a cigar, you know, okay. uh, by the side of the pool. So that's what I'll draw. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so I, I'm very, I'm very rarely stuck in a position where I have to create content without any direction whatsoever. Um, I hope that makes sense and that I know that's not maybe the most useful answer. If you, if you have artist block though, this is what I've always found to be helpful and ever, everyone I've talked to. Um, who does any art, any kind of art agrees with this, and that is to do something completely different and unrelated to the art, and spend time doing that for an hour mm. or two hours, then come back, and uh, somehow that kind of resets your brain. Um, you could also do another creative activity, uh, maybe something that, that utilizes muscle memory, um, so it, it just kind of frees you up a little bit to not put so much stress on that part of your brain that's trying to come up with the idea like, um, I'm not good at it, but I like sitting around and strumming the guitar, for example. Mm -hmm. So maybe if I have to come up with an idea for uh, an editorial illustration where they give me a story, but they don't have a specific idea for what the art should be. Yeah. Um, if I'm just sitting there spinning my wheels and nothing's coming to me, um, I might go for a walk, get some fresh air, look around, and while I'm walking, something will just suddenly pop into my head. It's mm. hard to explain. Or other people say if you take a hot shower, you get ideas. Oh, okay. You sit there and, and as the water's running over you, you start to kind of zone out. And then suddenly something comes to you. <laughs> um, other people write. They make lists. So if the story is about, um, say, uh, oh, something, point, yeah. Yeah, something good, bad like yeah. war or something, then you say, yeah, what are some uh, words I can yeah, write down? Like weapons or soldiers. And, you know, yes, right, right, exactly. Right. Yes, soldiers, weapons. Yeah, and because the, at some point, the concept is just about merging you know, things. Yes. So it becomes an idea. Like the, I mean, the time where we are the most uh, creative is obviously when we sleep. <laughs> like yeah. When we dream. Oh, yeah. We combine everything that we experimented during our life, you know, to it's true. create new situations and stuff. So I've so. had a few moments where I've, I've woken up um, early in the morning, like four o'clock in the morning or something, and, and woken up with an idea for something. Mm. And, I, and maybe other people can, can relate to this. Um, the idea I had for my first picture book came to me uh, at, l like that. I woke okay. up and I had an idea. Um, so I don't know where it came from. Uh, but the one thing it tells me is we need rest. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so it's one of the key, uh, yeah. yeah, key concept for creativity. Like the, um, I've read a book about it. It's a book about the psychology of uh, creative people. You know. Yeah. And um, and yeah, and one of the best advice is make sure to sleep. Yeah, um, yeah. And because. Uh, Maybe it's a misunderstanding, but a lot of people think, you know, like, oh my God, I need to work like very late until uh, no. 4 a.m., 5 a.m. and produce, produce, yeah. produce. This never um, helps. But yeah, no. No, and Pretty I good. think people wear that like a badge of honor sometimes. Yeah. Like, oh, I never sleep. As I'm always working. Yeah. But I don't think you get, get great results like that. If anything, you get very watered down, mediocre results because your brain is just tired. So give yourself a break, you know, go get some sleep. And when you awake, refreshed. Um, and this is a cliche, but uh, you know, if it's early, early, early in the morning, mm -hmm. you you just I think you do better work. I know a lot of people are not morning people. I'm one of them. I, I don't like getting up early, but when I'm really awake in the morning, early, and my brain is fresh, and nothing has gotten in my way yet, I don't have a list yeah. of things that's building up to do that day. And yeah, that was in the book too. What, what book was that? Yeah. Oh, that same uh, book you told me about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a... I think it's called a Survival, su survival Kit for Creative People in Enterprise. Oh, you know, that's so a really good title. And, um, 
but it's written by a, a psychologist and uh, and they were sharing yeah the the same um, feeling that uh, the best time to be creative like get ideas and things down is when you wake up in the morning yeah if you don't um, do anything in between to you know uh, distract your brain so uh -huh, like, uh -huh. if you wake up and check your emails too late too late yeah you've already given your brain yeah. something else to think about and too late. mess it up <laughs> that makes sense yeah no, giving very good advice like also you know there are a lot of freelancers working um, from home yeah yeah and um, and she was saying that uh, a very good routine would be uh, okay so you wake up you know you take a shower whatever you take a coffee but before uh, working because this is still your place you know this is where you slept mm -hmm. you take a walk ah like nice step, you go outside you just walk you know like for 15 minutes and you go back home and now it's your work environment aha uh -huh. you work you work you work but you don't direct, uh, like at the end of the day you don't uh, directly go to the kitchen to make dinner no no okay you go outside Take a walk, 15 minutes, you go, you come back, and now it's home, and now you can make dinner. Uh huh. You know, like, like routines like this really helps your brain. Yeah. You know, to, yeah. Uh, to be, be prepared for the creative process. It's, that makes sense. It's an amazing book. Uh, I should look for the reference. Maybe it's translated into English. Getting lots of book recommendations uh, while I'm on this trip. A really great friend of mine who I haven't seen in 20 years. Um, she and I had dinner last night and she was giving me a book recommendation for how to basically how to make yourself less judgmental of yourself as a creative person you know or just as a person in general not just as a creative person but to be to be able to observe what you do in life um, without immediately beating yourself up about you know um, what's good or bad about the thing you observe about yourself, oh, yeah. uh, which is very difficult to do. Um, <laughs> it's hard, you know. You when you do something and you make a mistake, it's 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 common to say to say, "Oh man, you're so come on, stupid," right? And she said that that of course is not good. And the book the book explains how you can be more sort of um, like a third party observing that behavior, and mm. then figuring out a way to correct it oh, that's without good. yeah without being mean to yourself and making it worse than it already is you know or maybe blowing it out of proportion that kind of stuff um it's a, it, it sounds like a good book she said it's in french and of course um for me that's a, it's tougher for me to read french than it is to speak mm. french because i i was never great at reading and writing french but i think i'll, I'll pick it up but there might be a translation i'll look at it yeah. but that's that sounds like a good one yeah i will try to find the book some somebody uh, some people in the chat are asking for the book reference but uh I have it at home, so I would try to think about it uh, when I will, uh, come back home and bring the book tomorrow. There are figures on the bridge. Sorry, I'm just going to change it back here to the drawing here. There are figures on the bridge. Yes, I want to just put somebody shadow. there yeah, and there, see there's someone. if that if that does anything. Is that helpful? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, is it distracting? Oh, maybe it's too big. No, It's too big. You're right, Michael. That's the problem. Get rid of that. Command Z to the rescue. <laughs> Command Z these people. Let's command Z them. They're gone. <laughs> I wish I could command Z some. No, I won't say that. Never mind. I wish I could command Z some things. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm gonna get that. Make sure these line up. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And I think. We, we might be able to just get away without anybody back there. It might be enough just to have the bridge. Uh, I think, yeah, that's... I think we kind of know what's going bridge, on. The yep. bridge, the sky, is good. The reason I think now, see, compositionally, he was able to get away with that is because the figure is pushed down further, oh, and here's yeah, our focal uh, point. The character is, is very small, right. if you look at the composition. Now in Compared our with the Mona Lisa. Is, yeah, so, this is very no, You have to stick to Mona Lisa. Yeah, I think it works. But now I think we're, I think we're doing okay here. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. And you will play with the texture, like the the clothes. Yeah, that's all. That's hair. all details, you know. So, yeah. That's that's the kind of thing that um, when we're really getting into it uh, with some more detail. Although I can I can suggest some of that now, you know, like this, just so we know mm. that uh, there's a fold that comes over. Oh yeah, to remember the fold. 
So when you start in black and white like this, like how, how do you add colors after? You create a new layer or? Well, that's a good question. In this case, I will likely not. I will likely paint right on we top paint of on what top. we have. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, and I've actually done some Adobe streams in the past where I've talked about how I, I like doing that a lot. I like working on one layer. Of course, it's not always practical, right? Yeah. There are many times it's not actually, but but for something like this, I mean, it's if I were painting, right? I would only have one layer, so <laughs> I don't cold. have a choice. Yeah. Canvas. So why not? Uh, yeah, why not do that? You know. Um, but the thing that I'll do is I will actually take this layer. I'll do it right now just to show you what the process is. Um, I also want to say I'm not married to any one digital process for anything ever. I, I, what I love about working digitally is there's so much flexibility mm -hmm. all the time. And it allows you to take, um, for lack of a better word, risks with your art, knowing that you have that safety net. You can pull back. You mm -hmm. can undo. You can, you're never stuck doing one thing and then saying to yourself, you know, oh no, I've messed it up and now I, I just have to give up. You always have, if you wish, you do have layers. You can work, if you feel like you're going to do something that might not be great in the end, but you just want to try it, go ahead and create a new layer and try it. And if you don't like it, turn that layer off, you know. So I'm not like, it's not like everything I do, I say I'm only going to work one way. But anyway, now so to continue what we were talking about there, when I feel like this grayscale image looks good and I'm happy with it, okay, I'll take the uh, this the sketch here mm -hmm. and I'll colorize it, okay. So I can do Command U, which pulls up my hue and saturation. Oh, okay. And then I can do a um, sort of an underpainting. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? Huh. Like so. And then I'll paint on top of that. And oh, what I like about that is then I have a warm underpainting or a cool, it doesn't matter which, but something will, will be coming through a little bit, you know? Mm. Um, and that might help to unify the colors on top of it, or it just feels good to look at it. I don't know which, <laughs> you know? And then normally um, with, with working with glazes, with oil painting, you know, if you have that underpainting, that's a, that's a warm painting. and you paint a blue on top of it, but you're, it's the paint is a little bit thinned down, then that blue will naturally, you know, inherit or display some of that warm color coming through, and it just helps to unify it with the other colors that are there. This is just a classic trick. Um, you know, just as an example, I could leave that there, make a new layer on top, okay? And I could set the opacity of that layer, say, to 80% or something, right? And then grab blue and I'll just I'll just paint directly on top of what okay. I've got here okay and we all see blue right looks like blue but when I do this oh I don't know if you can see the difference there yeah, yeah, yeah. why don't I do this here uh, here's the opacity at 100 okay now the difference. So that's 100, mm -hmm. that's 80. Okay. 100, 80. Can you see the difference? Is it too subtle on the screen? Oh, I went too far back, excuse me. So one, two. That's 100%. Yeah. That's 80%. If it's too subtle, I can bump it down. No, no, you can see the difference. Yeah, and so now everything I paint on this layer is going to have some of that warmth coming through. I mean, I can even just kind of yeah. glaze over here. You'll see it coming through, right? Um, that's another way to do it. And uh, I won't do that, but it's an option. So actually I'll just jump back to where I was or I could, you know what I'll do? I'll continue doing my underpainting using these colors. Doesn't matter. See, we just made a decision. <laughs> I love that. And since my values kind of hold up anyway, 
At, at this point, things are looking pretty pretty decent value-wise. Um, I'm not at any risk of messing anything up. I deal seeing it looks like it looks like a scary Mona Lisa. Yeah, so that's uh, I guess you just joined, so that's the point we are uh, trying to uh, do a mashup in a way, like yeah, to a combine mash- uh, the screen the scream by Edward Munk, which is uh, on the left, with uh, the Mona Lisa by uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, so why? Because we have a contest going on. If you visit adobelive.com, you can enter the contest and we, uh, you can download uh, free brushes designed by Kyle. Uh, and they are based on the real brushes used by Edvard Munch, such as the one which is behind us here. And you can use them to create your own version of the Scream. And this is a contest you have until uh, July the 14th to submit your entry and get a chance to win 6,000 euros, a ticket to Max, Creative Cloud and Adobe Star subscriptions, plus the opportunity to get your print dis- uh, displayed next to the original painting in the Oslo Museum. And Adobe will also uh, make sure that you travel to Oslo to admire your painting. So it's a huge contest. Uh, We really invite you to uh, go on adobelive.com and click on the link, enter the contest, which is in the contest tab on the right, and you will get all the details. I really can't think of a cooler competition than this (laughs) one. To get to go and uh, of course the money is amazing. Max is huge. And then, but the chance too to just to be standing there looking at your own work next to the original painting yeah. by Monk. I mean, that's uh, incredible. What a, what a thing that must be. All right. I mean, I'm starting now to just be a little pickier about mm-hmm. details, but I'm not. And look, we have Andre. Kaitano, he's working with your brushes on the screen version. Oh, cool. Wow. That is terrifying. I love that. Let me see that. Oh, yes. Good job, Andre. People are doing some really neat stuff. Yeah. Andre, that was super cool. All It's very humbling to to work as an artist. because you see people do such neat stuff and it just reminds you that um, there's so many there's so many good artists out there so many people are really just great <laughs> and uh, yeah this is a it's a it's really a crowded field so to speak I mean just so much talent out there um, And social media has made it so that we're more aware of the fact that there are really a lot of people out there who are just really darn good, you know? Yeah. Prior to prior to us having Twitter and Facebook and, and websites and all that stuff, um, it just must have been so much more difficult to get noticed as an artist, you know? Yeah, you would get noticed, uh, I guess, in your region. Yeah, and that's yeah. about it. Yeah, that's about it. But now with yeah, social networks uh, such as Behance. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. You see, like some projects on Behance, they get thousands of appreciations, you know. Yeah. And from all the regions in the world, like there is almost no creative hub anymore. Really. No, there isn't. Is like, there? People used to say, "Oh, you have to go to New York. You have yeah. to go to LA to do this or do that," and all these kinds of things. And no, not at all. Not anymore. Which is great. Yeah. It's a more level awesome. playing field, isn't it? Yeah. I like that. All right. How are we doing here? I think we're looking pr- pretty good. I think, uh, let's see, I want to change that just a little bit. <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, you got some funny comments? No, because there is new, uh, there are some new songs in the background. So we uh-huh. have, a, we have a, an artist, uh, his name is Andrew Applepie. He's an artist from Berlin. Oh, I think I've heard some of his. Yeah, in yeah. Uh, his background music. Uh, I mean, he, he produces uh, some uh, music and uh, we play it in the background. And there are some new songs, some new titles mm-hmm. uh, this week. So maybe there are some weird ones. So I apologize because someone said, oh my God, I was wearing headphone while working and listening. And the music, uh, like I thought that someone was screaming. Actually, <laughs> it works. 
It works with the painting. That's very cool. convenient. Yeah. What's wrong with that? That's that's what we want. Uh, Dorina is asking, do you use sometimes a clipping mask when you do uh, digital paintings? No. I do not. I do not. Oh, okay. I have to admit that I. W there are some layer, some features of Photoshop like that, that, for me, don't serve a purpose in my in my uh, process, but. It doesn't mean I wouldn't look at them and try them sometime and figure out a way to use them. I just, I just haven't. Um, you know, for for what we're doing now too, I can't see why, how that would be applicable. Where where would I use a clipping mask here? Maybe to yeah, isolate the to isolate yeah. the um the character. The character, but then I would have hard edges. Yeah. Unless I guess what you could do is paint a clipping mask. Oh yeah. You know, I and then work. you would have edges that aren't. But at the same time. I don't know, you know, being being someone who earlier on worked with traditional media all the time, um, prior to being 100% digital, I think I just am more comfortable painting shapes and, yeah, making them work that way. But again, like I said earlier, everything changes very frequently for me with, with process and how I do one image to another. Um, I don't even stick to one style for the way I work for clients, you know, which goes against a lot of hmm. the advice people give you in art school. They say you have to yeah, find make, your own style. Right, right. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, when I mean, if people are in the chat uh, check your your website, they will see so many different styles. Yeah, it's all over um, the place. Um, sometimes I feel like I <laughs> which look is like cool for us artists. because then you create so many different brushes. <laughs> yeah, actually, sometimes, can use. sometimes the brushes drive me to create a brand new style altogether because they'll do something and I'll say, wow, I love that, the way that looks, how can I make an image with that that look? And then it just forces me to try something new and, you know, uh, it's kind of cool. There's a question for you by Rory asking, what is your favorite brush? Don't have one. No? Impossible to answer that question. There are close to... 940 or 50 tools now <laughs> that I've de designed in the library. Okay. Now, of course, you know, 150 of those are um, half tones and screen tones. So if you, even if you subtract those, though, and you've got about 700 brushes, it's impossible for me to say which of those would be my mm -hmm. favorites because I bounce around using them all the time for different things, you know? Yeah. So there are some that I may be in love with for a week just because I happen to be working on a specific project that takes advantage of what they do. And then the very next week I'm working with something else and I just fall in love with those all over again. And recently, I, I mean, I hadn't played around with my pastels in ages. And um, I had made some new pastels about four, five, six months ago, I guess. And um, I forgot how fun they were. So I just started playing around with them one day and I, I lost about five or six hours of the day <laughs> <laughs> just fiddling around with them because it was fun. Well, we have uh, Charlie Careless in the chat, who is 12. Oh, he wow. Has to, he has to beg his parents to get the full Creative Cloud. <laughs> wow, good luck, Charlie. Yeah, good luck, good that's, luck. That's nice. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Hi, Carol from Indianapolis. Thanks for joining. So we are uh, live with Kyle. Actually, we started the live uh, one hour and 40 minutes ago. And um, we uh, actually are working on this piece, but uh, Kai will be back tomorrow sometime. So uh, 7 a.m. Pacific time, it's uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time, New York time, uh, and then 4 p.m. Paris time um, to, yeah, he will continue working on this, maybe add the work on the colors tomorrow, I guess. Absolutely. Tomorrow yeah. we'll go to color. We want to have a finished painting here. I mean, that's the goal, right? Yeah, that's the goal. That is the goal. We're going to do a finished, crazy Mona Lisa Monk mashup. Mona Lisa Monk mashup. Say that five times fast. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even try. Uh, Lanan is asking you which brush family is best for realistic painting. Well, if you like what we're doing right here, yeah. these are the yeah. Edvard Monk brushes that were designed and developed based on his actual tools. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, even in this sketch phase, um, we're starting to achieve a very painterly look um, to this piece as I go over areas 
you know, that I've, I've been sketching with. And as I size the brush up now and start to really uh, work more on um, the de not details so much, but, you know, I'm starting to paint in with bigger shapes, bigger strokes, excuse me, than, than previously. And if I just zoom in here, you'll see, I mean, that is, that's a painterly look, right? Oh my God, yeah. Okay. And this is, this entire piece has been painted so far with one brush. <laughs> we sized it up, we sized it down, we changed the angle and the tilt and the pressure. So which one? Which and brush? This is just the basic Monk Filbert brush. And there go. I mean, there you go. You, you don't, you don't need a lot of brushes to, to do a successful piece. You just need brushes that are versatile. Um, and can give you lots of different strokes. So, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like what we have here is pretty much indistinguishable from what you would see with real media. <laughs> I hope yeah. that's the goal, right? <laughs> and we haven't even touched the mixer brushes yet on this piece. So wow. we'll probably play around with those a little bit when we do the color. Yeah. Um, and just so you know, what, what you're seeing here, uh, because this is one of the brushes that is designed as a standard Photoshop brush tool, not as a mixer brush, you could be, we could be feasibly doing exactly what we're doing here 100% in Adobe Photoshop Sketch. This entire piece so far would yeah, be done. Yeah, because this brush works. In this works in yeah. Sketch. You don't, you wow. do not, yeah, so that's exciting as well. Um, She's asking, how can you change the angle of a brush? So yeah, if you watch the beginning of the video, this is what we were talking about. Uh, you need a, a device and a stylus that supports tilt. Yeah. Uh, such as uh, yeah, an Intuos Pro by Wacom could be. A yeah, start. Intuos Pro um, Cintiq is is a step up from yeah. that because it's what I'm using right now. I'm actually painting on the surface of this yeah. of the uh, stylus, which is extremely nice. That uh, stylus, excuse me, of the tablet. Um, yeah, it's 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 tremendous. It's so fun to work this way because you know what you see is what you get. It's right there in your face as you draw. Um, you're actually drawing on the surface, you know. Yeah, it's fantastic. First time I got a Cintiq, kind of changed my whole oh, yeah. world. Yeah, it's just such a oh, it's such, such a thing. A device, yeah. Incredible, incredible. Um, and I've been testing now for a few months the um, the uh, the uh, excuse me the Mobile Studio Pro. Oh, yeah. Which is a new model that is a fully functioning PC as well as a yeah. drawing surface, a tablet, and it's it's very powerful. Um, and believe it or not, the pen that comes with that is actually twice as sensitive as yeah. this pen, which seems you know, like, why would you That's even need saw. more? Yeah. This is incredibly sensitive, 2,048 levels of pressure sensitivity, I think. And the I new think one the new one is like eight thousand. Is it eight now? Yeah, I think Good it's eight. gracious! Yeah, it's it's in really a lot. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's pretty insane what's possible now. And Dorina, yeah, the mixer brush, yeah, you will uh, watch it live in action tomorrow. Also we earlier today, we, we played around with it. Did she? If, and yeah, if, if you watch the replay in. at the beginning of the of this show, you will see. Uh, uh, Kyle demonstrating all the brushes, including the mixing brush, uh, mixer brush, and explaining how it works. Yeah. Can you showcase more the artist tasting? Okay, so let me check what's happening on Twitter now. Okay, I see some work by Simon. Luke is, Luke is still working on it. Daryl is, and Simon. Okay, let me feature more. Uh, Creations by our friends in the chat. We have uh, Simon, Simon Blackmore. Ah, with Adobe Sketch on the iPad. Nice. Let's see. Yeah. Cool. In the menus. Cool, cool, cool. We just saw, I finally saw that painting in person uh, about 12 days ago. And Loic is still working on the lights now. It's getting to a different uh, oh, weird. mood. Oh, weird. Now it's getting weird. Yeah. yeah it's getting different. <laughs> now there's a hashtag. Wait. <laughs> Oh no, what, what? Oh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> it's the hashtag. It's good, look at the texture, it's really good, look. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you, they like I said, they sent me some cool reference wow. to, to, to design um, a texture for these brushes that's built right in that, that is supposed <laughs> to feel like, you know, what we assume. Simone. Is the time. 
He's doing a cute one. It's almost too cute. Oh, that is cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Keep sharing on Twitter for three days. The hashtag is Adobe Live. We love seeing this stuff. Yeah, it's because a good training, you know? Yeah. You can do some live training and then enter the contest because you have time. The contest is 14th, no, yeah, 14th of July. So, uh, lots of time. So, more than three weeks. You have more than three weeks to create a masterpiece using Kai's brushes and uh, find a good concept, a good reference to the original screen painting by Munk. Submit your entry and get a chance to win. All right. I'm looking forward to the next stage here. Mm -hmm. And I think that at this point, we have arrived somewhere where um, yeah. we're ready probably to, to move on. Uh, there, are, there are some very small things to work out, you know, um, and those can be done while we work on color and things like that. But you know, and the other the good thing about this is you should always do this with your work. Step away from it. You know, because I've been doing this now, we've been sitting here for yeah. two hours, yeah. probably actually actively painting for about an hour and 40 minutes. And um, the thing is, I've been looking at it a long time. I don't really have fresh eyes on it. Mm -hmm. And what's good thing to do is step away. So probably tomorrow when I look at it again, um, you know, there might be some things I'll say, oh, let's, let's change this, let's change that, you know, a few small things here and there. And that's always a healthy thing to do. Don't just, don't just stay there with your painting and uh, not take a break. When you come back, you see things that didn't work. <laughs> always. always. Tomorrow you'll be like, wait, why is she screaming? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, what, what was that right. idea? What's Michael must change the whole thing. <laughs> Why is there a bridge? <laughs> Hi, Adra. How long is this live show? So we, we are still live with Kai for uh, less than 10 minutes, actually. Whoa, maybe seven minutes. Uh, and then we will have a five minute break. And at the top of the hour, uh, Rufus will join uh, to host a show with uh, Suzanne uh, Helmick, uh, who is a digital painter from Amsterdam. Uh, from the Netherlands, actually. I'm not sure if she's from Amsterdam. I think so. But from the Netherlands, that's for sure. Uh, she is uh, working on the books or she's designing uh, characters from the Middle Age and uh, she will uh, show you actually how to do uh, facial expressions in different kinds of screams. So it would be also very interesting for you uh, if you want to enter the contest. So she will be live for two hours and then we'll welcome Sebastian Hu who will do some uh, photo bashing <laughs> yeah, and we'll discover cool. what this is. Uh, but basically science fiction uh, concept art based on the Adobe stock and digital painting for two hours. And then for the night shift, uh, Rufus will be back with uh, Therese Larson, uh, who is a professional character uh, designer, um, also using uh, Photoshop. So yeah, the the night, night shift, shift is back because it will be 10 p.m. in Paris. Wow. For the last show, 10 to midnight. Well, actually, yesterday at midnight, it was uh, 29 degrees Celsius outside. That so, is not right. Yeah. <laughs> Should not be that way. So it's not a real night shift. No. Because you go out, it's still a little bit sunny, it's still light, it's warm. The hot shift. The hot shift. The heat wave. That should be the, the, the name for this this whole stream uh, these three days. The heat wave. The heat wave. Sounds like a really cheesy radio program. Yeah. You know, two o'clock oh, in the morning. Actually, I have the radio effect. We can play with that. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's go. Welcome to the heat wave with <laughs> featuring Kyle Webster. Hey, Kyle, how are you doing today? Oh, squeaky clean <laughs> and lean and mean. <laughs> You mean thank you. Thanks for joining the heat wave. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the funny part is that we cannot hear what's going on. But oh, okay, good. I trust my uh, effect. I trust audition. They can let us know in the chat how how corny or amazing <laughs> we just were. Uh, corny for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, go I'm gonna guess that was more corny than anything. But I like being corny. All right, well, um, 
let's take a look at it as a postage stamp again. That's always a good thing. <laughs> See tiny, tiny Mona Lisa there. Let's go a little bigger than that. Uh, another good thing we can do, of course, is we can create a new layer. And we can just draw a little box over here and block it out. And now we can really isolate our picture and just see how's that looking. We've got our values worked out pretty well. You know, you can read it clearly. Uh, the lightest bits, yeah. of course, are her face. Love it. And uh, I think tomorrow we can move on and see what we can do with, with color. Um, I just want to make sure this carries the um, the cloth, you know, that um, shape kind of. Make sure that's a continuation of this over the shoulder area oh, here. Point. You know, uh, that's a little change to make right there. Good point. What's your name, Mr. Host? Michael. My name is Michael. The Mr. One and only Audra. Michael Shades. All right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That hand's a tiny bit big. There we go. I guess. Oh, I guess we're signing off in a minute here. But we've made some yeah, progress. We're signing off in uh, yeah, in about two minutes. Is there anything we should highlight really fast so anybody who's tuning in at the last second is aware of the contest and yeah, how to sure. get these? Go to adobelive.com. There is a contest tab on the right. Uh, make sure to enter the contest. We ask you to create something like this. I mean, you you can download the free brushes. The Photoshop brushes created by Kyle based on the original brushes by Edward Munk. And uh, you can reinterpret. We Oh my God, interpret. Reinterpret. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. The scream. Like, woo. By Munk. <laughs> hey, create your own version. And if we love it, if you win, you can win 6,000 euros, a ticket to Adobe Max, Creative Cloud, and Adobe Stock subscriptions. And we will display your print, your creation next to the original Scream in Oslo at the Munk Museum. And how good is this? Adobe will pay for the trip to Oslo. Yeah, so you is... will be there and you can take a selfie with your own um, yeah. painting. That's, uh, that's good. Amazing. All right. Well, okay. I think that looks pretty decent. And tomorrow we'll look at it again with fresh eyes and probably make a few modifications here and there. But generally speaking, we'll move on to the next phase. Remember, this was all done with one brush, uh, the Filbert brush in the um, Adobe official Monk brushes uh, set, <laughs> the official brushes of Edward Monk. And uh, yeah, just size it up, size it down, use different angles, and you can get yourself a, a pretty solid sketch. Awesome. Yeah, there you go. All right. Oh my god, yeah. So we're That's feeling, exciting, huh? Feeling good about this. Yeah, I think tomorrow we're... we'll add some colors to be so cool. Yeah. Do you think you will take the same color theme as the original uh, painting or Good question. Uh yeah, yeah it's, here's <laughs> the thing. We've got I think what we'll do is we'll probably use the the, the colors from Yeah, from Monk. From Monk. Yeah. yeah. Um makes sense. Yeah. It's a strong, I mean such a strong uh, choice you know, mm -hmm. like monk like is a color palette is always a yeah and that orange sky so is very unique. distinctive yeah um and i think we'll be able to kind of work out that it's the it's the mona lisa as far as who's screaming <laughs> maybe not doesn't matter Who this knows? is fun yeah um any other questions at the end here i think we have one, no, a couple they, minutes or yeah, julie says that it's a contest uh, worth entering yeah i agree like uh, <laughs> yeah. amazing price so yeah, thank you, Kyle, for this first day. I mean, it was a first uh, stream. So you will be back tomorrow sometime. Uh -huh. And uh, today we will welcome more guests. So again, we will welcome uh, Susan Helming and then uh, Sebastian Hugh for two more hours and then uh, Therese Larson, all live on adobelive.com. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. It was super cool. Thanks for the, the nice questions, nice comments. Thanks for sharing on Twitter. And we will be back in about uh, five or six minutes on adobelive.com with uh, Susan. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Michael. See and you thank tomorrow. you, everybody. Yeah. Right. Bye, everyone. Ciao.